welcome to Crafty Shenanigans. I'm Shannon Smith and today I'm just going to go over a little bit of some of the basics of beginning to color with color pencils. Um, you may already know the things that I have to share but hopefully especially if you're just kind of new to it I'll give you a few of the just basics that I've gotten to know just from playing with them and um, just practicing really. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Well, let me just start by showing you, this is the set of pencils that I'm going to be working with today. There's kind of a glare. Um, Arteza makes a nice set. These are artist quality pencils. They are really good value. You get 72 colored pencils, and I believe I paid somewhere around like 35, 36. It was really reasonable. Um, you can see there are three trays full of colors. Whoops, excuse me three trays full of pencils and I think they have a nice selection of colors plenty of browns I really like their selection of greens um, and actually even just some of the fleshier tones um, so this I think is a great place to start if especially if you're just starting out and I'm just going to take our pencil my pencils right out of the tin so that I can just access them easier And I like these a lot. They're, they're really easily blended. And so this is what we'll work with. But also, let me show you the stamp set that we're going to work with. This is um, from My Favorite Things. It's called Secret Santa, and it has just all these really cute images. And I really, I actually really like their stamps for coloring. They always leave just, um, they don't go so crazy with the details that there's nothing left for me to do. I like I like to color, and so I like being able to fill in those details myself sometimes. And this is just really a fun one to work with. So, with that, I think we should just go ahead and begin. So we'll start out with our tree. I went ahead and pre-stamped these. I want to focus more on coloring today, so um, I went ahead and used this. This is actually... I've used it a couple of times on here. It's for my die cut machine, but it just helps me have a nice smooth surface. So I use it for coloring all the time. When I first start coloring, what I'm wanting to do is just put that first layer of color on so that my other colors have something to blend into. I am not a super technical person. Everything I've learned from coloring with colored pencils has just been from practicing. I'm by no means I have I had any formal training, but I did use them quite a bit um, in my last job as a designer. But let me just show you, honestly, it's with everything. I think you just have to try. I think sometimes things like coloring can be a little bit intimidating. And I think we put too much pressure on ourselves. But just play, have fun. Great thing to do if you're watching a show or something. So I'm not pushing very hard and that's important. You don't want to put your first layer on with these hard lines because that will be harder to blend into. I like to just put a soft layer of color down and a lot of times I'll go in kind of a circular motion. I don't want to just do lines unless I'm trying to put a texture into something. But like I said, mostly I'm just trying to get that color to leave, just put a, that layer to blend into. And I will generally start with the lighter, the lightest of the colors I'm going to use first, because you can always go darker. Not so easy to go the other way around. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a maybe a little bit deeper color. And once again, like I said before, I'm just going to reiterate this. You can it's it's a practice that just takes some time and some patience. It's all about just layering the color on there. And if you just are a little light-handed, um then it gives you a lot more freedom to do what you want. You haven't got everything committed to like you do if you if you've pushed too hard. It also makes it so that if you don't really like something that you've done, it's a little easier to go in and correct it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now I'm intentionally putting some lines in to give our tree a little texture. Okay, you may have noticed that I'm kind of going up in and shading a little bit where it would be underneath one layer of the branches. But again, I've just layered the color. I'm not um, having to use a darker shade yet. I will be using a darker shade, but um, you can control that just by how many layers of, of color you put on. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add my darkest color get a little bit more shading in there just to give our tree a little bit more dimension also I should point out if you have one of these white erasers these are great for erasing colored pencil they're also good with pastels I can't live without mine I'm just kind of feathering it off into the other color so there's not that just in that completely distinct line kind of want to break that up a little bit and I'm just going around the ornaments just a little bit make them pop out just a little bit more okay I think we're ready to move on to the next part of our tree let's do sound first we'll do he's kind of a no-brainer because he's obviously going to be done in red so again I'm just lightly adding my first layer of color and when I'm working in these little detailed areas with lots of little corners I definitely like my pencil sharp so now I'm just gonna go in and add another layer of the same color just so I can deepen it to a darker shade and also you can see your colors will smooth. If you're going through in that circular motion that I talked about earlier, you can see how that just evens that out. Okay, so you can see where I have kind of a harsh line here. I'm just gonna take a blending stump these are something you can find in the art section of any craft store. Um, and they're just paper. And you don't have to push really hard. In fact, I don't like pushing too hard because sometimes I might want to add a little bit more pigment. And once you've broken down the fibers, if, if you're pushing down really hard, you're going to break down the fibers of your paper. And so don't push down hard unless you're pretty sure you're done with the color. See how that just smooths that out? We just wanted him to have a little bit of color in his cheeks, but we didn't want him to have a stripe. So that just smoothed that right out for us. Some people like to add different kinds of um, things like uh, Gamsol or baby oil, but if you're careful how you layer your color, you shouldn't have to use it too much. I prefer not to if I don't have to because I feel like it takes so much of the color off. Okay. So now, you know, I actually want a little bit darker shading. In our red, so I'm actually gonna use some gray just to get a little bit darker. And when you use really different colors from each other, that's another time when the, the blending stump is really handy. That would give you a smoother blend. So now I think we'll go ahead and go on to his beard. And I think, actually let's do his gloves first. So I'm just gonna lay down a layer of gray. And 
Now I'm gonna honestly, I, I like mine even sharper than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen my pencil. Excuse all the ink on my fingers. I grabbed my stamp pad. Uh, apparently I didn't have the lid on there very good. Okay, so I erased a little bit of that color just because we want to hint at it. We don't want it to look like they're blue. We want them to just kind of make the white stand out. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to sharpen this pencil. And we'll go ahead and kind of define his, his beard and his mustache a little bit. Oh, it looks like we missed one other little spot. We need the little ball on the end of his hat. I'm just going to go ahead and use just really small, light circles to just kind of highlight where his beard is. Again, we know his beard is white. We just want to make it better defined. Just a little more contrast. So now let's go ahead and we'll color the base of the tree. I think we'll just, we'll just stick with brown. All right, so let's go ahead and do the skirt. Basically all the same principles apply. So I sharpened my pencil because I was going to come in closer to the trunk now. I wanted to be able to get in tight. Just gives you just that much more control over where you're coloring and How much you want to lay down. Okay, so now I am going to smooth this one out just a little bit. Because I didn't push too hard, I'm able to apply a little bit more color on there too. Just right there in the base to give it that much more depth. So on these woods, I'm going to do it the opposite a little bit because I'm going to start with darker shading around the bulb because we want to go into, we want to give it that kind of round feeling. So I'm just going to get lighter and lighter to help create that. decided to go back in and just add a little bit more texture to Santa's beard. I don't want to do too much because we still want it to look white. Okay, so now that we've got that all colored, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I finished off the card. I wanted this video to really be focused on the coloring more than anything else, but I will um, point out a couple of little things. Uh, this border is actually an FSJ border uh, die that I cut out. And uh, let's see, I added a few presents and I added the little boy, but all the same coloring principles that I used here, I used on all of these. And I think that's about all that I, oh, this, re this background right here, this I actually took from a piece that I used last week on an upload. It's got distress resist spray on it. So if you want to see how to do that, um, 
background, then go ahead and we'll add a little um, link to that particular video. And so that was just kind of fun to use another little piece from that. Do you have a little scrap pile like that? I have a little stash of things that are just backgrounds or whatever that I haven't used yet. And then there's that little snowdrift that I also used one of last week that I just tucked behind the window a little bit. So I think that's just about it. I think that about covers it. And I may do another video in the future that has maybe some different ways that you can add texture with your colored pencils or, or whatnot. But for now, I thought that this was probably a good place to start. Well, I hope that you found something that was useful to you that will help you with your coloring. And if you have any questions or any suggestions or ideas, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Um, and... I would love for you to share with me just anything. If you want to tell me what you're working on, I would love to hear from you. I would also love it if you would subscribe to my channel and hit the bell next to that and share what you see with your crafty friends. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me.